Let's close the door. He went, he sat on my, the seat where I was seated at the front. So of course I could not ask him to leave me my seat. <laughs> so I went to the back. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, when the plane crashed, the pilot was killed and since he was in the next row, uh, he hit his head on the barrier and, and he died also instantly. It was a very, was a very traumatic uh, experience. He kept on just saying, we are dying, we are dying, and people were screaming. It was only his voice I was hearing, and because he was seated just like one, the second row opposite where I was. I regained uh, my senses on, uh, I think, a Tuesday. Excuse me. <clears throat> the NAC government was barely three weeks old. The newly sworn in President Mwai Kibaki was still bedridden. Then that evening of 24th January 2003, news came in. A plane crash had occurred in Busia. Nearly half of his cabinet had been involved. Details were still scanty. Welcome to KTN's untold story, the Busia tragic party. Shock. Panic and anxiety gripped the country on the chilly evening of Friday, 24th January 2003, when news came in that a plane had crashed at the Busia airstrip in what is now Busia County. But this was not just another flight. Nearly all passengers on the ill-fated plane were members of the Kibaki cabinet that had been constituted barely a month earlier when the National Rainbow Coalition NAC dramatically ended Kanu's 40-year grip on power. It was the first ever homecoming ceremony for the formidable position, the NAC team, after a grueling 2002 general election. The host was then Funula member of parliament, Arthur Moody Awori. Awori had just been named to the cabinet after being an assistant minister in the Daniel Arap Moyes government for nearly two decades. Awori had chartered the 24-seater Gulfstream aircraft and on board were 22 passengers. When we arrived at the airstrip in Busia, the first drama started because there were cattle on the airstrip. And I had to speak to the people, my people down there on mobile, which was, you know, really against the aviation, you know, regulations. But after consulting the uh, pilot, uh, you know, they said, yes, you go ahead, because when they hear my voice, you know, they will know what to do. So they managed to remove the cattle from the airstrip, and we landed quite safely. After landing at the airstrip, the 22-member delegation, the pilot, his co-pilot, and three air hostesses drove 30 kilometers away for a day-long merrymaking at Modi Awori's home. Everything seemed on course until it was time to leave. At first, not all passengers had boarded the plane. There was one whom, uh, two people whom we couldn't find who were on the plane. One was Mohisa Kitui. We didn't know what had happened to him. Apparently, when they left, my home, they decided to pass at the home of the Attorney General, who is just on the way, you know. So they delayed there a bit, but eventually he came. Then there was the, my friend, Khalif, uh, from Wajir. He wanted very badly to pray. And luckily there was uh, a mosque somewhere. So he had stopped there to say, you know, 
prayers. When all passengers had boarded, it was time for takeoff. That is when, in less than 10 minutes, something went terribly wrong. I cannot forget this, you know, because uh, uh, it, when it went, you know, to move, uh, then to go and tax, uh, uh, we were standing, uh, you know, by the side to try and wave at them. But when it swung, first of all, because it was a big plane, you know, we had all to duck down. There was a, almost a first accident there and then. You know, the wing, we didn't realize how far it was. And we had to lie down for it not to hit us. But then it went and it took off, it tried to take off. And it took a long time. And when it took off, and I have seen takeoffs over the last many years, you know, it was bending. And it moved, and within a matter of seconds, we heard a bing bang. We could see, and it went down. <laughs> Okay, okay, so you have called the aircraft back. At his office at Harambe House, the internal security minister was a busy and sad man as he sought to dig out as much as he could as journalists waited. Then came the grim confirmation. A chartered plane with 10 passengers and the two pilots crashed at the Busia airstrip late this evening, killing the labor and manpower minister, Honorable Ahmed Khalif, and both pilots. The plane hit a porthole just before takeoff, lost control, hit an electric pole, and it crashed into a house. The air crash was a serious blow to the then newly assembled cabinet that many admitted represented the face of Kenya. At the time, the president himself was still admitted at the Nairobi hospital. Mimi Mwaikibaki. Kenya's third president, Mwaikibaki, was in power, but was still recovering from the Grizzly Road accident that nearly cost his life in December 2002, as he returned to Nairobi from a campaign to Ainu Kambani. As he ran the government from his sickbed, half of his cabinet had just been involved in a plane crash. Ahmed Khalif had caused to celebrate his colleague's victory party. It was a warm-up to his own, scheduled for the next day at his home in Wajia. We came here to celebrate the victory of our old man, Awari. Minister for Labor Ahmed Khalif perished that fateful evening. Former Minister Rafael Tuju seemed to have cheated death very narrowly. The late uh, minister was, uh, had gone to the mosque, so we were waiting for him and I was seated on the front. And it took too long, it was getting hot, so I walked out and I asked the pilots, why are we still here? And they told me, no, we're waiting for one more minister coming. So the minister, you know, just arrived then, he went, sat on my, the seat where I was seated at, at the front, so, of course, I could not ask him to leave me my seat. <laughs> so I went to the back. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, when the plane crashed, the pilot was killed, and since he was in the next row, uh, he hit his head on the barrier, and, and he died also instantly. So it, was very, it was a very traumatic uh, experience. Lina Jabi Kilimo says she was seated behind the then human rights activist, Wanjiro Kihoro. She was seated and she was turning, talking to me. 
we were talking stories about how she grew up in Nandi, and so we were learning some Kalenjin words and all that. We didn't even notice the plane taking off. So we just had a crack and found ourselves upside down. I was very conscious during, throughout this process. Um, I, I remember that um, the, you know, the plane actually did hit electric wires and uh, that was fortunate because I think that helped to slow it down, it slow down the crash and then it crashed onto this roof. And until today I'm grateful that on that day there was a power failure. Otherwise, that plane would have been ignited and, uh, you know, it would have uh, just, you know, blown up. Labor Minister Halif succumbed to injuries that evening. Wanjiru Kihoro slipped into a coma and remained in that state for four years. Hamed Khalif, he kept on just saying, we are dying, we are dying, and people were screaming. It was only his voice I was hearing, and because he was seated just like one, the second row opposite where I was. So, and the word of God says confession is possession. And uh, because I have walked with Christ in my life, even going to politics was about really feeling that it's a will of God for me to go and make a difference in the environment of my community. So I told him, uh, stop saying we are dying. Say we are living. Don't say we are dying. And then uh, that particular time I remembered uh, uh, that God saying in his word, uh, uh, Psalms chapter 91 verse 14, that call on me on the day of trouble and I will deliver you. Manjiri's wife, she was badly injured and she was already unconscious. Martha Karua, she was in a bad way. Chelimo, Lena Chelimo, this, this, all these, they were really uh, badly injured. Young uh, George Haniri, uh, he couldn't see. I think something had happened in his eyes. But now we had to find a way of getting them to a proper hospital. I must have passed out in the air. So I didn't feel the crash. We've taken off. I announced to her that we are now airborne. And uh, then I felt the rear wheels not quite behaving. I realized something was wrong. Before even knowing what is wrong, everything went out. I felt myself next to the tobacco mission hospital. Rescue operations were mounted as the plane wreckage remained perched on the roof of the house with fuel still gushing. It was a race against time lest it burst into flames. Uh, help came. It's, I was unfortunate because I was by the window. So it was easier for people to get out through that window. Uh, and so the, my seat was on top of me and people were passing on top of me. And because I tied my belt, there's no way I could come. So I was sandwiched, sandwiched between this. And people would come over from past me to pick the other people. I could account for almost everybody except Tuju. And this, I said, now, where is Tuju? Is it? We went still back, you know, to the place, and we couldn't find him. Fortunately, one, had been, one of the windows in front had broken during the, you know, the crash, the impact. So I was able to get out of it. And as I got out, the uh, fuel was gushing out of the, of the wings. And uh, my next fear was that this thing was going to blow up. I mean, if, uh, um, you know, it could, with all that fuel, you know, it could blow up. So the most important thing, because I was conscious, was to jump out of the place as quickly as possible. So we were on the roof, so I jumped down. But more panic would set in when the rescue team shifted its focus to the house where the plane rested. The whereabouts of the owners remained unknown with the fears they could have been crushed to death. Surprisingly, the owner Charles Tiang, a businessman dealing in bicycle spare parts, and his wife had postponed moving into their newly built home by a week. Otherwise, they would have probably been killed 
that evening. Yeah, Jale nisikia kwa radio Nairobi Satatu. Sasa vile nimeshuka kwa gari usubuhi yake nikakutana na wamama wakaanza kutoa machozi ati ya kwamba mi nimekufa kwa sababu nilikuwa nimetangaza ya kwamba naenda kuingiza nyumba. Sasa tukaanza kulia nikachoka. Kuja nikapata ni nyumba yangu ndio ajali imetokea. Ulikuwa umesafiri kwenda Nairobi lini? Nilikuwa nimeenda kuleta spares ya bicycle. Nilisikia tu watu wakiongea town ya kwamba ndege imepata nini? Imepata ajali huko kiwanja ndege. Sasa niliposikia hivyo ikasema ai ikiwa ajali imepatikana huko na nimewacha watoto sikuwa nimewacha mtu mmoja kuwatafutia chakula wacha vipande boda nifanye nini kiende nione ni nini mbaya imetendeka huko nilipo nilipopanda boda ikafika pale nikashuka wakati nilishuka watu wenye walikuwa hapo wakaanza kulia walifikiria ya kwamba niko wapi kwa hii the former president who is a neighbor of Nairobi hospital never found time during that whole period to go and visit my wife. We pray that you may be his private physician. For a long time, I felt responsible.